Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic way of painting an Imperial Fists legionary for the Horus Heresy by Games Workshop. Now the Imperial Fists are known for their really bright punchy yellow power armour and in this video we're going to be showing you a really great way of painting this. And there is a perception that painting it is quite difficult but the truth is the yellow is not actually that difficult at all, it's everything around it that makes things tricky and we'll certainly look at that as we get to it. Now it's worth noting that most Imperial Fist infantry are yellow on their colour scheme so that what we're going to be doing in this video can be applied to just about any Legion squad type or indeed any primary Space Marine as well. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. paint your Imperial Fist Legionaries, the first thing you need to do once you've built your miniatures is to undercoat them. And for this colour scheme what I recommend you use is some Wraithbone Spray from Citadel, which is a slight sort of ivory colour, so nice and warm, so ideal for the warm yellow that we're going to be doing here. And what we need to do is start out with that yellow. What we're going to do is initially apply it using a contrast paint, and ironed in yellow is the colour to use here. And to apply it what you need is a large brush because we want to paint it across the entire miniature. So what I've got here is a shade brush from Citadel, one of the medium shade brushes, good size for this sort of thing. What we need to do first of all is just get some of this paint ready on the palette. Now you don't need to thin it down with any water but having it on the palette just lets you clearly see what's actually happening on your brush because this way we can get the right amount on there. Whilst we are looking to apply a fair amount of this we don't want to overdo it because you don't want to make it too orangey. There's a bit of a sweet spot in finding it and having it on the palette like this just helps adjust and remove excess paint until you get to about that sort of point there and then you're ready to begin. Now if you've never used a contrast paint before, they appear to look like a wash at first glance but they actually behave a little bit differently. Think of them more like felt tip pens and so to use them you need to pick a starting point which I typically will go for a leg down here. What you do is just paint it on like this just letting it settle as it does and it's going to stain it with a strong yellow colour and as I apply it you can see it runs a little bit and settles and in some areas goes quite strong and a little bit blotchy. Now don't worry about that because we are going to fix it up as we go along but what is important is that you let it settle and dry as it will. So you can see I'm just picking this leg, work my way around it, make making sure I cover it entirely, working it into the nooks and crannies, and then I'm going to leave it. Now you have to leave it because if you go back to it, what you effectively do is tear the surface and it gives it a rough finish, and we need that smooth finish. So just allow it to settle like that, and just leave it to dry completely. Once you have painted it across the entire miniature, it'll take a little bit of time to dry, so be sure to leave it for about 45 minutes before you move on to the next stage. The contrast paint is now completely dry and you can see we've got that nice bright punchy yellow but it is a little bit inconsistent because you can see some patches appearing on the leg just there. So the next thing that we need to do is to neat that up because the contrast paint has done its purpose being the base coat and the wash in one go. Now what we're going to do is layer over the top of it to neaten it up and this is where the actual colour for the Imperial Fist is going to come into it. What we've got here is some Uriel yellow. Now to apply it I've got a medium layer brush from Citadel although any sort of medium sized brush like this will do just fine and what we're looking to do with this colour is to apply it onto those flat armour panels whilst avoiding the recess. Now starting out with this it can be you know it gets a little bit of getting used to to avoid certain parts but as you get used to this you really do get into a rhythm and it actually becomes very quick and really satisfying to do as well. So what we need to do is just find the right point to thin the paint down to just around about there nice and translucent and then it's just a matter of looking to paint it onto those flat panels. So for example if we go back to the leg just here all I'm going to do is start painting it thinly over the top of this panel just here just letting it settle in those flat areas and you see straight away I get that really nice bright yellow very quickly and very easily. Now what I'm looking for as I do this is those recess parts which you can see we've got these little panel recess lines around here. As I get close to those it's a matter of just making sure there's not much paint in the brush and just carefully moving up to those parts but not into the recess because this way we retain that definition whilst also getting that even flat colour on the flat panel. So just there like that. So as you can see doing this is actually nice and straightforward so yellow is definitely a lot easier than it first appears. It's just a matter of just taking your time working your way around the entire miniature's power armour just doing this. With that stage done you can see now we've got that really nice golden yellow for the Imperial Fists and so with that done now what we're ready to do is start blocking in some other colours on the miniature and here we're going to be starting out with the black and for this what I'm going to use is some Corvus black which is actually a really dark grey but later on what we'll do is put a black wash over it which will give some depth and some shading so it works very nicely on armour like this. Now to apply it I'm going to start out with my medium layer brush but it's a good idea to have a smaller one on hand because there's quite a few features to pick out with this black. We're looking for all sorts of details so for example the majority of the bolt gun is going to be this colour. We've also all the joints, we've got any cables on the armour and in addition for the Horus Heresy Imperial Fists we've also got the backpack to do as well. So make sure you thin that paint down for the purpose and just change brush as you need to 
For this, I'm just bringing it down to about this sort of point here. So it's fairly thin, it's a bit translucent, so I will need two coats here, but it is gonna be easily under control, so it's nice and easy to start using this. And as I mentioned, we're looking for various details here. So you're looking for cables, the main casing of the gun. So at this stage, what I'll do is paint the entire bolter like this. We're also looking to paint the whole of the backpack with this color and any joints in the armor. And this actually brings us to the tricky part about painting yellow, because as you've seen, doing the yellow isn't that difficult, but what is difficult is painting around it when you start getting to details like this. So for example, this joint here, because this is all about control, but as you're doing it, inevitably some mistakes are going to happen. So as you're doing it, something like that might happen. Now, if it does, let's quickly wash your brush. Just make sure it's got a bit of water on there so it's a bit damp. And just use that just to wipe it to remove the excess paint as much as you can. It is going to leave behind a bit of a stain, but you can see by reducing this, what it's going to do is make it much easier to fix that up. So if that happens, just get it down to about that point there and then just leave it and carry on with your black. And what we'll do is come back in a minute to fix that up. I finished painting all that black, so now it's time to address the mistakes. And of course, we've got this one here on the leg, but also there's a few more around the miniature. What we need now is some Wraith Bone, the painted on version this time, and all you need to do is apply two thin coats over the mistake. Once you've finished applying the Wraith Bone, the next thing to do is to return to some iron and yellow, and all we need to do is paint it directly over the top of the Wraith Bone. And once that's dry, you're then ready to return to Uriel Yellow. And with this, all you need to do is apply two thin coats directly over the top. And with that done, you'd never even have known the mistake was there. And so now what we're ready to do is move on to base coating the next color on the miniature, which is going to be for the silver detail. And here we want a dark silver, so I'm gonna use some lead belch for this. And to apply it now, I've got a small airbrush from Citadel because we need more control with this color because it tends to go on smaller details. So definitely go for a smaller brush on the uncomfortable width. But as ever, what we need to do is make sure the paint's nicely thinned down so we have that control over it. And then it's just a matter of working our way around the miniature, looking for any parts that we need to pick out with silver. Now there are numerous parts to do on the bolter here. We're looking at things such as any little bits of decoration. So for example, this little part down here, but also things like the magazine, the bayonet, the barrel, anything like that, just block in with this color. In addition, there's a few silver parts that appear on the armor, and this includes this sort of cabling that we've got on the chest. So it goes all the way around here towards the back, and even this bit in the middle, this is silver as well. And on the backpack, in fact, we have some silver too, including these vents that are the round ones on the sides. We've got these central bars going down the top of it. So we're looking at these ones that are raised up just in the middle right here. And also there's some vents a little bit further down on either side. So in this case, what we're looking at is things such as around here. Finally, there are the studs that are on the shoulder plate for the reinforced armor on here. And with this, just really take your time here because it's a bit tricky going around these details, but pick out each of these as well. With that silver blocked in, we're now ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be to apply a black wash onto the miniature very selectively, just on the black detail, the silver detail, and also some very specific recesses. And so for this, I'm gonna be starting out using a small airbrush to apply it, but you might wanna have a larger one for areas like the bolter, things like that. I am starting with this small one for a very specific reason though. And what we need to do is just use a regular palette to get the paint ready, so that it's under control and make sure the brush isn't overloaded because some of these details we need to paint this over are gonna be quite small. And what we're looking to do is to paint it directly over all the silver and the black that we've applied. So for example, on the chest here, around here. Now take your time as you're doing this, being very careful whenever you get close to that yellow, just bringing it up to, but not onto it. And the reason why I've gone for this small brush is for these small recesses that we've got just here on the helmet, little vents like this that we want to darken down to. And having a small brush like this means we can just dot some of this wash into the recesses of them to get some definition on those parts as well. The wash is now completely dry, and if you want to, what you could do now is skip ahead to where we paint the eye lenses, put some decals on your miniature, and then base it, and you're ready for the tabletop. However, if you want it to really pop out on the table, what you need to do is some highlights, and that's what we're gonna start doing now. And as I mentioned, this is entirely optional, but if you wanna do it, it's best to start out with the main part, which is going to be that yellow armor. Now for this, what we need is a color called Phalanx Yellow, and what we're gonna do is edge highlight all that yellow with it. And to do this, what you need is a brush that holds a good point. So what I've got here is a size zero from Art Sopus. If you wanna to stick to Citadel brushes, what you're looking at here is a small layer brush, something like that, but really anything that holds a good point. And with it, what we're looking to do is to use some of this color to follow all the sharp edges of the armor, so working our way around it. The real trick to doing this is to make sure you thin the paint correctly, because you want it to be a little bit inky so it flows well, but not so inky that it runs out of control. So it's a bit of a balancing point that you need to find with it. And it is different for every paint, but for this one, what we're looking for is this sort of consistency. So you see, it looks quite runny just there, but the thing about it is I can paint it very easily by just painting some lines on the palette. Now, if you do this, 
and it's flowing well from your brush and it just keeps on going, then you know you've got it thinned down to around about the right point. So that's good, I'm happy with that. But if I went in straight away now, I've got way too much paint on the brush and it's just going to really go every way, see, because there's still loads in there. So what I'm gonna do is just remove the excess off on some tissue, so there's not really much there at all. Just draw up a small amount and then I'm ready to go. And you can see this way, the brush doesn't look like there's really much paint in it at all, but there is plenty there for our purposes for what we're doing. And so what we need to do now is start looking for the edges on the armor. And if you're looking to highlight them quickly, then what I recommend you do is just approach the side of the brush and look for details that stand out they can easily access with this side. So for example, the top of the knee just there, all you do is just skim along it like that to get that brighter yellow, just catching the corner just like that. Same on this side too. Now we're only looking at this stage for details that stand out and easy to access. So this shoulder pad edge is a great example here. You can see I've just turned the model just to make sure it's nice and comfortable for me. So I'm nice and steady as I work my way around that. Now, if you're just doing it quickly like this, it'll take you around the shoulder pads, a little bit on the helmet, some on the hands, things like that. But if you want to take it a little bit further, then what we're looking at is these details that are harder to access, such as these panels on the arm just here. Now, for that sort of thing, you can't use the side of your brush. Instead, you have to use the tip of it. And to do this, the easiest way to do it is to brace the model so you're nice and steady. See, my hands are touching so I'm not shaking. Then just paint downwards towards yourself, just with the tip of that brush, just to get that edge very carefully there on that side then on this side as well. And this way it just helps those details pop out a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned, it's not entirely critical getting areas like that, but if you do so, all the detail is just gonna stand out much, much more than it would otherwise. So it's really up to you whether you just do this on elite squads or on everyone, the choice is yours, but it's just a matter of taking your time and being as neat as possible. And with that, you can see now we've got a nice highlight and all that yellow armor helping those edges pop out nicely. And with that done, if you want to, you can take it a little bit further. And this is something I normally reserve for characters, things like Praetors and things. Essentially, it's a second edge highlight just on select areas to make them pop that little bit more. So for this, we now need a light color. And for this, I'm gonna use some Shabti Bone. And what we're gonna do is edge highlight again, but selectively. So I'm still using the same brush for it, still got that size zero brush. And now we're looking for less of it because what we're aiming to do is just focusing on the parts that stand out more. So we're looking at things like corners, for example, or sharp edges, anything like that. So for example, if we take a look at the shoulder plates, we're looking at things such as the corners of them. And what we do is just look for the sharpest bits, which is just here, and just apply a little bit of this color to the corner only just to make it a little bit sharper and help it stand out more. Now, other areas you might do this on are things like the top of the hand. So we're looking at areas such as just here, possibly the knuckles and things too. And also it's a good idea to do some of this on the head. In this case, we're looking at areas such as the brow. So we're looking at this bit just in here. Just very carefully move in and add a bit of this color just to that point in the middle. And with that, the yellow of the power armor is now complete. And so what we can do is move on to highlighting the other colors we got there. And for this, we've got the black and the silver. So what we need is some Mechanica standard gray, first of all, for the black. Then for the silver, we need some Stormhost silver. But first we need Mechanica Standard Grey, and for this, once again, for most of it, I'm going to be edge highlighting. So I'm using the same brush, still that size zero from our Stopus. If you're sticking to Citadel brushes, you want to use a small layer brush here. And with this, what we want to do is go into this assuming edge highlighting throughout. So thin the paint down to that point, just testing it to make sure you've got that right inkiness of it, so it's flowing well, but not flowing out of control. So something sort of like that. And with that prepared, then what we're looking for is all that black detail, first of all. So for the bolter in the backpack, we've got to edge highlighting because we want nice solid edges on these. So again, just approach wherever possible with the side of the brush, especially all this raised text that we've got on the bolter and just very carefully follow it all the way along to get a nice gray highlight on the sharper edges of these details. This is the same on the backpack as the gun I did just there. So again, we're looking for these angles and we just want to gently follow along each one. So all the way down here, for example. Now, when it comes to the leather for the holster we've got for his pistol just here, do the exact same thing. We're just looking for the raised up parts. We just want to gently pick them out. So just follow them all the way around. But at this stage, we also have things such as the joints to pick out. Now for these, obviously we can't use the side of the brush. So instead we're looking at the tip. For this, just angle the model so you're painting downwards towards yourself and just pick a few of the raised up parts. So for example, just down here to help that texture stand out. And with that highlight applied to the black, we can now move on to highlighting the silver. And this is once again gonna be an edge highlight looking for the sharpest edges of all the silver details and just very gently picking them out. And with that silver applied, all the colors are now highlighted. And so we can move in for a final small detail, which is to paint those eye lenses. And for this, we're gonna go for a glowing effect. And to do it, first of all, we need to darken down the whole recess of each eye lens. So for this, we're gonna use a little bit of Norm Oil. After that, what we need is a pure white. So I'm gonna use some matte white for this. Then we need a bright red contrast paint. So here I'm gonna use some Blood Angels Red. 
But first of all, we need that Nuln Oil and to apply it, go for a really small brush now. I'm actually using a size double zero for Martis Opus for this, for lots of control. And we just want a small amount of Nuln Oil, so use the palette to help control exactly how much is on your brush. And with this, all we're looking to do is to wash it into the recess of each eye lens. So for example, this one here, approaching from this side and just very carefully just run it into the entire area. Once that wash is completely dry, we're then ready for some matte white. And with this, all we're looking to do is to paint a line in the middle of each eye lens. So just very carefully move in at this sort of angle and just very gently introduce it right into this area just here. And then finally, we just need some Blood Angels Red thinned down with a little bit of water. And all we need to do with this is carefully introduce it into the recess of each eye lens. So just very gently like this to get that glowing red effect. Now with this done, all you need to do is apply some decals to your miniature and then you're ready to base it. As ever, it's entirely your choice how you base your miniature, but in this case, I'm going for an urban rubble base. And here we have the completed Imperial Fist Legionary ready to stand firm in defense of the Imperial Palace. So as you've seen, painting the yellow of Imperial Fist is actually very straightforward and not as all as difficult as it might first appear. What makes it tricky is all the colors around it, particularly blacks and silvers. Now on Mark VI Power Armor like this, there isn't really that big a deal because there's not that many other colors on there. But remember when you're doing these details, just take your time with those base coats. And if you do make any mistakes, remember it's quite easy to fix it up as well. So have fun painting your Imperial Fists and we'll see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.